We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. Welcome back. Let's jump back again to 2022 when we left Indonesia on a 50 foot catamaran sailing to Australia with our friends on SV Nalakai. Two families, one boat, the world was opening up again slowly and returning back to Oz by boat was now not so complicated. Let's meet the crew. The captain of Nalukai, AKA Mackerel Matt. The fun loving and very organized Tara. 17 year old Ali. 15 year old Liam and the Catalpa crew. Lee, AKA Mr. Fix It and the stretchy, very smiley Sarah. 17 year old Taj and 16-year-old Bella. Leaving Tuval, our last port in Indonesia, we had checked out of the country and our next stop would be Australia. We departed in the afternoon with a light breeze from behind, pushing us along nicely. It's our first night at sea. On our passage to Australia. Welcome to Nalkai's Kitchen. Tonight we are having pasta. In the oven which I think may have been enough, but I've made two lots of pasta. And then I'm making a roast, roast carrot macaroni. It's taking a little while. That's what we're having for dinner tonight. We're motoring. That's not too rough, so that's nice. <laughs> the veggies are roast. The oven's better than my oven, but it's not as hot. I'm used to putting stuff in there and it's like, Wah! it's cooked now. It's taking a long time. Very long time. What are you doing? No, just standing here. No, I'm waiting for the shower. It's it is. Look Sorry. at us guys, it's healing. It's nearly gone. Starving. <laughs> no, oh, he's cooked. waiting for food. Yeah, that's why I'm sitting here. Here's your dinner. <laughs> We're on rations, mate. We yes, can't. there you go. <laughs> we can't eat too much. All right, so it's morning. We had a pretty easy night. There was one squall this morning, but we've got no wind, unfortunately. First fish. What's it gonna be, Liam? Yellowfin, hopefully. Yellowfin? Yeah, yeah. That'd be nice. Oh, barracuda. Oh, now you gotta get it off. Little kicks. It is fine on lower, so it might be. As you know, it did its first run, tied itself out. Or it's a mackerel. I reckon it's a little, I reckon it's about, I'll even call the weight, I reckon about seven kilo mackie. Oh man, they were wise. Had a good run to start with. Could be right, Liam, might be a turner. Yeah, Alright, guys, in Australia we call these TWs, time wasters. They go straight back in, we're not a fan of eating these ones. What do you reckon, Matt? That's not my turn. I can't believe you burnt your arm out on that thing. So we all take turns on this vessel with the fishing rods. Oh. Liam reckons that one didn't count. Anyone... Do you reckon your arm's got it in to get another one in though? Yeah. You reckon? Looks like it's the bloody bananas for dinner. Here we got omelette and potato and some avocado. It's pretty yummy. Flame grill. Flame grilled. There was a little bit of an explosion in the kitchen today. <laughs> Unfortunately, no one captured it. We got wind. I reckon Mackie. Sure enough. Two. Oh, double hookup. <laughs> what? Oh my god. 
What'd you do with that bat? I'll tell you what, anyone that boards the boat, look out when Matt's got a bat. Yeah, they'll keep us fed. Here's our dinner. Can I tie a rope around you? This is how you cut a mackerel up if you uh, want to work with more manageable sizes. So come around the perimeter like I've just done. Usually go to about the length of your blade here. Mop that down there to the bone. And then I can just work. We're gonna skin the fish later. We don't want it longer than our blade. Fish burgers. Woo! So try not keep them out of the water too long. Just take what you need and put the fella back. Let him carry on. And you can see our bloodline down the bottom. So generally I'd fill it down this way and then you've got to cut out all that. So what we're going to do is just come down here, either side of the bone, and then just work that around the bloodline. Well, keep your balance. I'm not used to this cat thing. Oh, look, I've got a little bit left there, but I can trim that off. You can see here there's the bloodline, there's the bone. We don't, we're not a fan of keeping the blood. I think it's, uh, if you've got too much blood on your fish, it sends it off. Let's go down that side, out that side. Once you get your system in place, knock that off like that. Just clean that up after, flick that around like that. That bloodline again, come around. We find that when freezing fish, especially mackerel, it definitely keeps better when you cut out the blood and bones. And this way of filleting, it is also ready for the chef. Day two into our passage back to Australia, leaving Indonesia. We've got the wind straight behind us. We're heading for Thursday Island, which is the top of Australia. Sitting on five to seven knots, with about five to eight knots of wind behind us. Taz is on watch. Day two and the sun's just gone down. Longest passage on a cat. I must say it's bloody easy. It just feels like you're sitting in your lounge room at home. Oh, that's what goes on on a passage, hey? Everyone just sits around watching movies. Matthew, darling, we've been talking. We think you should move back to Minnesota. After it's cooking all day, cleaning. Oh, okay. Your mom there's and I can been cleaning. Help you raise Maddie. So we all been together. cooking. You have a church, a support Bella's system. Bella's been on watch. Yeah. 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 Liam was trying <laughs> to catch a fish. <laughs> 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 it's Alan. I did the same watches as the kids. <laughs> I watch next. I did a watch, and then I have a watch at nine. Three days left, and we'll be in Australia. Aww. <laughs> It doesn't feel like we're going as fast as we are. Eight people on board makes for very easy watches. This is our rough roster. So it's day three, beautiful morning, a few storm cells around. My shift was from three o'clock. I'm just about ready for bed. Uh, I've had wind behind, now the wind's on the nose. Forecast shows the wind from behind. Might just be a bit of storm cell activity. That's given us the wind on the nose, see what happens a bit later on. A lot of fishermen last night, a lot of fads, a lot of boats, no ships. Should be another good day. I'd like to turn the engines off. We're trying to conserve fuel at the moment because it's uh, quite expensive back home. Sun's coming up and uh, gonna leave Sarah with it, I think. The rod was screaming, and finally Liam got the fish he was chasing. Oh, it's yellow fish. Is that the yellow? Oh. Oh, 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 yeah. Perfect. Oh, perfect. That's fun. such a good size. Sashimi. Got the knife there? No, Taz, what do you got? A little bit, a little bit tuna heart. Still beating? Yeah. 
to go on the tank and things. <laughs> you got plenty of one. <laughs> what does it taste like? It tastes like a piece of fish. Really salty. Salty heart. Nah, actually not salt. That's blood. It just tastes real fishy blood. Bloody fishy. Do I have blood on my face? No. no. Is it nice? Not really. No, it's you like... You can eat the whole thing. I can get my beer. Bit it into it too. Bit like it, it in half. Like okay. Ah, oh, breakfast is served. Things are still sizzling. This is a mat special. What's in that mat? Got the sizzling uh, omelette. Sausage, sausage, onion, tomato, egg, a dash of milk, some selected herbs and spices, and that's it. Put a link to Matt's cookbook down below. What other, what other recipes can you find in that cookbook? Baked beans on toast. Oh, Omega Rank special. Keep it simple. <laughs> keep it it's called Keep It Simple Cooking. How many meals have you had today? Well, I started off with a coffee and a biscuit. A biscuit? A and then, uh, <laughs> then it went from a coffee and a biscuit to a smoothie, now to an omelette, then to a nap. I'm going to cook it a little bit later. Yeah, Lee's on lunch. Stay tuned. Stay tuned, folks. We've got a special way that we open them. Oh, okay. You know what You just really... Crack it like an egg. Wow. That's not bad, man. I like it. That's a good That's looking good. avocado though, oh my god! We continued to be pushed along with a nice breeze from behind and Dad got into the galley to prepare lunch for everyone. This is what you call a little bit of um, fresh mackerel crumbed on there just like so. We'll grab another bit. we just get that and we'll roll that up like so. He had a bit of help in the preparation. Sushi is a favourite amongst the crew and you can't beat fresh fish. Uh, sushi time and we have fresh sashimi. So we have mackerel which is the lighter coloured one. We have a yellowfin tuna. We have crumbed fish, avocado, fish on its own, tuna on its own. It's all fresh, fresh as it gets guys. Um, I think I got both of those. Oh no way there, Liam might have got one. You get a little bit of tuna, fresh yellow fin with a bit of avocado. You dip it in some homemade mayonnaise from Sarah and you get a bit of wasabi and maybe just a little bit of soy in there. Mm. And that's the gully. Alright, so we're heading back to Oz and we are not allowed to bring back in fireworks. So we're under passage, we're not stopping at any islands. So what do you suggest we do, Liam? Light it and blow it up. You're going to attempt to light that thing while we're driving along. Yes. Dad, you ready? Yes, you hold on and point it away, boy. I'm just going to sit up here where the fuel is and block it if it comes back. So now, strong hands. Morning watches are mum's favourite, especially when it's calm like this. Why does mum prefer catamarans? Well this is one of the reasons. So much space.
do you want me to do that to you, Ali? <laughs> We're about two days off Thursday Island. We just got some wind on the beam. We don't know if it's a bit of a squall, but we're going eight and a half knots. We're just making some water. We were going to do washing, but there's a bit of a squall. So we'll wait that out. And we are going along nicely. Oh, no. The wind does turn in a couple of days, so we're going to be pushing it to get into Thursday Island before the wind goes on the nose. Hopefully we get in before that. Last night was pretty easy, I think. There has a bit of wind. We sailed maybe a couple of hours, but the motors were on the rest of it. But yes, it's a very cruisy life on a catamaran. Uh, yeah. There is like 10 knots on the beam and we are still very stable. We just, we just chunked a cable. <gasps> oh no! That could have like electrocuted you. No, it wasn't this either. It pulled, the was winching up and the rope pulled it into the block. Can you just chop that little end off? Yeah, it's a usable end, that's fine. It's fine, no problem. It's fine, no problem. Nothing's a problem. You know, I always get my neutral and that mixed up, so I just write it down before I pull it apart. Dad fixed the plug and we continued to be pushed along with the wind. slightly sliding off the table <laughs> and you see everything that's on this table Catalpa couldn't have any of it we couldn't put even that tissue box on the table <laughs> it's like glass everywhere oh look guys you can't unbelievable custard with our little peach on there we did have peaches thanks honey that looks like an egg we are going a little bit slower because they're in current and we just texted my dad on the sat phone to see where the current, if we went lower, if we went further south, if we'd get out of the current. And he said we would. So the captain is just looking at it now and he's going to adjust the course maybe. But we should be at Thursday Island in 48 hours. It's Tara's prediction and she got it by doing this on the map. Last night we went this far. <laughs> so tonight if we do that again and then, so she reckons two days. We have to get there in two days because the wind turns and we don't want to be here. Who knows what the next few days, hopefully not few days, next day or so holds. Night watch four. I'm on the three. Now it's Dad's turn. Night watches, we do two hour shifts. And now it's Dad's turn after Tara at 3 a.m. Dad usually stays up for a bit with Mum first up in the morning. He has a coffee and they get to hang out on the deck watching the sunrise. This morning the engine while Lee was on watch, the water in the intake was getting low, well it seemed to be, so Lee thinks there's something around the prop. Lee, uh, Matt is about to jump in and check it. Well, I, I'm going to come too because I'm going to have a swim and I'll film. That was good too. Oh, by the way. I'm ready to go to the other oh, side. That was actually like this. It's got a stinger. Yeah. Do you want a shirt? That's all the way stuck. Well, there it is, whatever it is. Oh! Want some vinegar? Or you want me to pee on it? It's got stung, it had like a tentacle on it. Uh, it looked like a jelly. That's an out here again. Oh shit. Yeah, the other side. I'll back her up. No, it's got shit around the front. That one's got more. Oh, 
really. Matt cleared out that side and Mum jumped in and got the other side. The intake had seaweed blocking it. All clear? Righto. Fire up. Matt got a nasty sting, but he survived. We are motoring along, but we've got the sails out. Um, the only reason we got the engines on is because there's a southerly change coming, or so easterly change, and we need to get to Thursday Island before that happens, otherwise we're going to be punching into weather, and we don't want to do that. So the engines are on, but we're sailing, and we're going seven and a half knots. The wind is at like 40 degrees. It's very nice, the sea state's very kind. There's no swell. We're just going along very nicely. Captain's the co-captain. I keep calling you the captain. Just crow. Just habit. He's having a nice time just up a, here. Just a decky. Just a deck end. He's, he's a pretty good deck end. Oh! The catamaran has a very different, it's a different rock. It's very smooth and it's very calm. Every now and then you go like a little jolt and it catches, good, eh? it catches you off guard because you're like oh it's so still it's, so, oh, <laughs> it's very calm it's very nice and we're having fish curry today I think the captain's been cooking what kind of curry is it Matthew? Spanish mackerel and something paste like a curry it's got it's potato just, in it you're talking it down someone took Some, it up it's green curry it's I green think. curry Sarah's favourite colour. It's oh, pretty good. It's, it's got, got, got lots carrot. of flavour. It's got lots of flavour. Lots of flavour. It's a flavour, a flavourful mouthful. Should be a good yeah. We found weevils in the rice so we had to cook up a ton because we don't want those on board. That's all that's going on. We watched two movies today, Shawshank Redemption and Moana. Two very different movies. <laughs> and Tropic Thunder. Oh, in Tropic Thunder, they watch three. I, this is what's going on on this boat with eight people. Bella's drawing. Taj is napping. Taj just had a little bit of a that temperature yesterday. He wasn't feeling the greatest. He's prepping food that's going bad. Oh, I don't what are you drinking? Smoothie from earlier. Just the <laughs> The frustration in your face. Oh, you're so mad. We're going into cold weather and we're sailing in the sun all day long. I didn't want a burnt scalp nor a cold You're one. You're not going to have a burnt scalp. I left lots of hair on your head. <laughs> Looks like a rat on your head. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm in trouble because I was trimming his neck. He had a lot of hair here. And um, there was a little bit of miscommunication and I thought he said, shave my head, and he didn't. So, he's not real happy with me, but we gave him a great haircut and I think he should be really pleased. Oh, Everyone says good. he looks younger. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, do it to the intense look again. It's definitely, um, you could come straight across that sea in between the nets, there's like little white ones. You can actually see the net. Do that intensity. Oh, no, there is net in front of us, Matt. We've just come through at the right time. There's a net coming right across in front of us to a buoy there, to one there, to one there, to one out there. This thing could be kilometres and kilometres long. So um, we're going to try and figure out how to get around this thing and how long it is. There's, there's the next one up here to the right. The next one up to the right, Matt. You reckon that would get caught if you just went neutral and went over it? You could probably, get, like you could probably hop in and swim and like let it under. Sorry about the bad haircut and all, but um, <laughs> halfway through I, I should hope. If you have a look here, we're in the middle of the Arafura Sea. We have a net that's kilometres and kilometres and kilometres long. I don't know how, how uh, hard it is to get around this, but we may have to go over it and just push it up and eat the um, peels, have a little swim at the same time. A couple of kilometres alongside the net. Oh, there it is in front of us. Right yeah. there. We did see a number of AIS targets in a row. That's it is marked. We thought they were boats. Out. We couldn't actually see them. And I don't think we're prepared to just go kilometres to try and find the end of this net. So we might just jump in and put the boat in the neutral and push it under and move on. Here it is here. You can see it just goes for kilometres and kilometres.
we found a part in the net that was actually full of fish and the floats are all pulled down so I just crossed it instead of going kilometres that way and kilometres that way. Look at Sarah, always cleaning and you just relaxing. Though. Dad forgave Mum eventually and we watched the sun go down. Another day on the sea as we headed into night five. Night five. It's been very calm. We've got wind on the nose. Night watches consist of watching for boats and obstacles, but also keeping an eye on the wind and if the engines are running, engine checks, monitoring the temperature and checking for any abnormal sounds or alarms. That's where we passed the um, nets. Thank God we did it when it was still lighter. And this is true. Another day and a glass out meant motors were on and we were going to be in for a calm day. nautical miles away from Thursday Island. We're in Australian waters now and I'm just going to go and ask the crew. What's the first thing you're going to buy when you walk into a shop when you get onto the land? Thinking I'll have a liquid dinner and I'll get myself a nice big Guinness with a big creamy top on it and just sit down and think about what I'm going to have for dinner. The big beef juicy burger. Oh, that was my one. That's what I would get. Maybe some chips. Hot chips. What are you going to have with it? Like a Aioli burger? sauce and like beef added chips. Or Darley peppermint uh, BB balls. Oh. Darley chocolate bullets. Iceberg lettuce. Uh, fresh strawberries. It's going to be a thing of ribs with a little steak on the side. Nice little organic kombucha and and maybe some of those donuts. The, the cinnamon, cinnamon ones cinnamon from. Sugar. Yeah. Frozen mango. I'd probably get a nice stick sheet. Burger. If it's like lunchtime, I'd probably go and get some nice big fresh fluffy rolls, <laughs> lightly seeded. And then I'd get what we call a dirty bird, a cooked chook. Throw maybe a little bit of potato salad or pasta salad on top of that, fresh roll. Maybe a little bit of green and tomato on that just to, you know. Iceberg lettuce. Oh. You talk about that lettuce. A lot. I'd probably get a veggie burger with chips. <laughs> if I could choose any restaurant actually to go to, any Mexican. I'm going to sushi and getting like 
really good sushi. Oh, sushi. Froggy bowl. Take a step back and think about things for a bit because I wouldn't know which direction to go. So I'd probably go into Coles. They have a bottle shop attached to it. So I'd go in there first, <laughs> grab a bottle of red. Then I'd go pick up some olives, pick up some fresh cheese, pick up some pickles, get the brie, get the... Oh, I get all the, I'd have a platter like that big full of all just little tappers. Oh. I want cheese and crackers and a glass of red. The food's the most exciting part about going back to Australia. And I mean, and my family. Oh. I'm going to Bunnings to get a sausage sizzle. I, I might come with you. Uh, Mark, Actually, yes. Get one of those wrap things. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. I want the pork, Japanese pork. Buckwheat wraps and they put like smoked salmon and avocado and really yummy sauce and they and they wrap them up. Oh my god, they're like a pancake wrap. Going to JB Hi-Fi. Surf outlet. Sideways surf and coals. Surf outlet and undies. Surf outlet. I've had to change because I had this planned. When I get back to Australia, I was going to go straight to Whitworth's, but now I don't have a boat. <laughs> I'm a bit lost. <laughs> Maybe a surf shop? Get a surfboard? Hey, what <laughs> What's the first shop you're going to visit? He's going to be Whitworth's. Whitworth's. Uh, or Bunnings. Um, get your sausage shop. And I need undies. So best of the list, here I come. <laughs> New bikinis. What, what type of swimmers? What brand? My favourite's Tiger Lily. Got a yellow flag over here, we've got to put this up. We're in Australian waters now. We are quarantining. Before we get too close to crocodile infested waters, we turned off the engines and had a swim. There is a life I lead in this city. Hurrying to cup my tea. I can take what I need to get by It doesn't make it easy The other piece of my heart moves slow Somewhere in the great unknown When I return from the afterglow Will you carry me like I am whole again? Wait, hold on Put me together Take me back where I belong I want it all I had a feeling but the feeling is all gone We got on the move again and put the rods out Not long after, both the rods went off and it was fish on See us some birds over here busting up the surface with some fish. So I'm just going to turn over there quickly, troll through it, because we threw those other ones back. See if there's some tuna in there. <laughs> it's like when we were kids. <laughs> <laughs> you can lie in the backyard with a sprinkler. Yeah. When didn't... you didn't have a swimming pool. Yeah. Well, me and my friend didn't do that. We just sat in a bucket. <laughs> we filled up a bucket and we used to sit in it. That's what Eli and I used to do. <laughs> yeah. Friends will come, friends will go They all seem to change While I'm still the same Cause I just can't let go And there's no one to blame It's just the way it is We are about an hour off getting to Thursday Island where we're gonna drop the anchor and have a night and hopefully get some fuel. We are about an hour away, so not very far. Look at this beautiful sunset. We've had no wind, it's been super still all day. We've motored for the last 24 hours and um, it's been very calm. We had a swim today, caught some fish that they threw back but we've had a very, very cruisy day and we're just coming into Thursday Island, top of Australia, Torres Straits, and 
We can't go ashore here because we aren't allowed to clear in until Cairns. So we can't get off our boat, but we can anchor up and have a good night's sleep and get fuel, hopefully. Terra's been organising getting fuel. Hasn't been the easiest thing. They've been telling us a lot of different things, but apparently we can get fuel. So hopefully there'll be some fuel and then we will continue on to Cairns because that's where we can officially check into Australia. We can't check into Thursday Islands because they don't have any biosecurity. We have to keep on going, which is a bit of a bummer because we wanted to be able to show, like stop and go down the coast a little bit slower and see some stuff, but that's okay. You gotta do what you gotta do in these uh, pandemic times. We've got to quarantine for 14 days. They can't see time now, which is awesome. So we can stay on the boat for 14 days, which it's gonna take us that long to get to Cairns. We've already been on the boat for seven days, so we've got seven more to go. Anyway, we've got the sun going down and the boys are having a drink on the front here. And how did you feel? What Last time you crossed the gulf, was it this calm? No, it was scary. You're a, you're a little bit nervous about this crossing, weren't you? Yeah, I'm so glad it was calm. I don't like that we had to pay for all the fuel to come across, but it was very comfortable. Yeah, last time was very scary. It was a confused state and water waves came over the top and splashed the person on watch and the whole back deck was full of water probably about that deep. So I wasn't looking forward to it, but it's been very nice. It's under five knots, so you're allowed to have a beer. You're allowed to have a beer if it's under five. I feel it picking up. It's picking up the wind. That's just wind. No, that's, that's, <laughs> that's apparent wind. Apparent wind. The boat's going faster. Yeah, we're going to see land. Land ho! Oh, back in Australia, mate! Oh, sick, bruh! Good day. <laughs> How good is it? How you going? How, How good, good is, is it, eh? What do you reckon, Tazza? <laughs> Get that Vintang shirt out, eh? No, I don't have a Vintang shirt. <laughs> this is Lemon Barrack. I may have, it was a gift, I'd invite myself. <laughs> Thanks for Pretty nice thing to do in school, Ali. Yeah. Just watching the sun go down, sailing into Australia. We are arriving in Australia and it's weird. Starting vessel knowledge by this is uh Tower Port Control. Yes, uh, you are clear to enter an anchor uh, in the vicinity of Port Island. Just a question, are you aware of the no anchor zone? The yeah, we're I've got a couple of movements there this evening uh, across the tower main. So uh, you can anchor anywhere, uh, just as long as you're not inside that uh, no anchor zone. Okay guys, so we arrived last night about 1am into Thursday Island when we dropped the anchor and um, had a good night's sleep. And this morning we are going to get fuel. We were just waiting for Border Force to tell us our instructions and they've just told us to go over to the jetty so we're going over the jetty to get fuel so we had been back at thursday island not being able to go ashore we had a really good time last time we were here up, up, up in a painted cup i would pour my love from a cloud above so bright i can see the lights taking you up and above the blue sky tastes good to be drinking all of the honey sweet brew of ours up up in a painted cup right in the sky like a firefly like a firefly I believe to believe is to feel the fire grow within Friends lived here, they're not here anymore, they've moved and we've got a friend who's still here but he's not actually here, he's on the Sunshine Coast uh, We're about 500 nautical miles away from Cairns so it's going to take a few days to get down there We've got to check the weather because there was some southerlies and we don't want southeasterlies because it's, it will be on the nose. Yes, yeah, so we're going to get fuel, have a look at the weather and then yeah, see if we head off today or, or when we head off. Is our drone pilot getting ready to fly. All the drone footage lately has been Liam, so... Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Liam. Oh. Yeah, we're just coming into a jetty now and, and then we'll okay. yeah, check the weather and start heading south. So we've done a week already and by the time we get to Cairns it'll be another week so. Yeah. 
Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, Thursday Island was still not checking in boats. So we could stop for fuel, but we couldn't go ashore. It was weird being here and not being able to go get food or have a walk around. But we were grateful for the fuel and everyone here was lovely. What the hell? I saw you sitting down. Where's all the sludge? <laughs> this isn't fuel. I have never seen anything that clear. Are you sure we got ear fuel? <laughs> yes. Hobble bar ever. Copy that, thank you. We're on our way. Fueled up. First stop was TI in Australian waters and we're out of there. We're off like a bride's nighty. thinking a reef and it's too late guys we thought about it and then we thought we'd do it when it was 30 plus knots it seems to be the way it doesn't matter what kind of boat you're on you just go oh it's all right around the corner it's magic around the corner in indonesia too oh look we can zip up the wire quickly just behind me is um, the top, the very northern tip of Australia, Cape York, and uh, we were there five years ago. Um, that was the last time we were up here, but I'll put a little bit of footage in from when we were there. the very northern part, or the very northern tip, Cape York. We're just going past Cape York, we left Thursday Island, and now we're heading down towards Cairns, where we can check in to the country. We just had some a little bit of rough and wild weather, and um, it's still a little bit rocky, but we're going along all right, we're motoring, it's a little bit of head sail out. We are going six knots, so not too bad, not too shabby. 
don't know if we're going to stop tonight or we're going to keep going, but we are heading south. We ended up pulling into a really protective anchorage and from the look of the place we thought if we put the drone up we would definitely see some of the not so friendly Australians. Saltwater crocodiles are the scariest of animals. It was safe to say that we were not jumping in the water here. Dad landed the drone, but it didn't stop and headed for Mum's legs. But to be fair, she did say she didn't move quick enough. Oh, drone killer strikes too. Oh, oh, oh no, no, hang on a second. Don't say that because Sarah did say something. I'm your new drone pilot. I did not crack it. it was, it was <laughs> I did say that today. Yeah, you know, we could drone pilot getting ready to fly. Except for this, this was dad. <laughs> You're not on watch unless you get in the back rub. <laughs> if anyone ever thought you had a hard life, please. <laughs> you surely don't. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's quicker to get that in, isn't it? We started with dinner swimming away, but we did have a little bit of wind. Leave everything for me. Stay the night. And us girls have been knitting while we have been sailing. And this was Ali's top she made. Walk through the rain with me. Get soaked to the skin, feel free. Shut the world out. Let's hang out. We had 10 knots at a not too bad angle and moving along nicely. Um, and so they're a completely unrelated um, wound, yet they've sort of gone down the same thing, like swollen and pussy and pecs and sort of look. And that's not related to being in the water, so it sort of set us through the whole leg. My other leg's got cuts, but they're not infected. Yeah, I know staff, you got to be super careful with that too. We've got, I've drawn circles around the sores where that's red and infected. Yeah. We talked to Chris and he reckons it's cellulitis or staph. He said it's really common in the waters up here. So I've just been over to the local pharmacy. Prescribed you three types, four types of antibiotics. Given us four types of antibiotics. <laughs> He's got all the drugs, this one. <laughs> And if I haven't checked, if I've gotten worse in 48 hours, he told me to set off the EPIRB and go to hospital. It straightened out the um, that ring on the other one, so it must have been a big ear. What happened to your lure? Well, we got hit by some big, we don't know what they were, but they were like big Trevally, Samson, cross looking, big strong Trevally, Kingy. They weren't Kingy. Yeah, yeah, they look like Kingy. Right? They're not Kingy. Yeah. They look like, but they are weird. We had never seen them before, but yeah. ripped the bib off my Qantas. So back home we call these Qantas lures. And uh, they work really well with uh, blues and wahoo and all that, but 
one straightened out my ring and then these are only endo hooks and straightened out two of the hooks on the treble here yeah, so yeah. i'm gonna rig up this old fella the old red and gold it's close to the Qantas but it works really well you can see all the picks over this one in the past this works really well for the who's the wahoo the who Wahoo! Oh, that one. Wow. Something chomp down on that thing. Yeah. Uh, Got chomped. Oh, ha, ha. Hey! Oh, you're so cute! Oh, this is the first dolphins I've seen riding a bell. Oh, there's so many. Three nautical miles on your aft stern. 
going to give a little update on my leg. I'm still alive. I didn't get worse. So that's a good thing. Everyone said to monitor myself for the next 24 hours and um, I don't have a temperature this morning. My legs are still a little bit infected but I've started taking antibiotics so yeah, I'm okay. No problem. Just my legs a little bit sore. But. And I don't have to get Maddie backed out. <laughs> It's insane. We've been in tropical waters. I've been in Southeast Asia for nearly five years. I've never had anything like this. And as soon as we get back into Australian waters, that happens. Which is weird. But um, our friend Chris thinks it's cellulitis, which or is real, or staff, which is really common in the waters up here. I should have. What happened is I cut my leg on the ladder, and I should have put something on it straight away. But I didn't think to. It was tiny. It was like. It was so small, it was the smallest little cut, so I didn't think anything of it. If you are up this way, make sure you put some kind of cream or betadine or something on your cut as soon as you get out of the water. That's my advice. That's my two cents for the day. But yesterday's a little bit swollen today and it's really sore to about out there. So it's sort of like out there. But they seem to be... Sorry about my hairy legs. I couldn't show I'm going to use the excuse that I have cuts all over me. That one looks way better today. Still really sore out to about where that line is with That's a sun shower. Oh, there's a rainbow. Yeah, up around this neck of the woods where I go to wind my line in and there's a kilometre more of line out because someone keeps letting my drag off. We've been given a hot spot down here for the fish. There's a uh, fellow I taught the fish back home, Chris, and um, he said, don't miss this secret spot. He said, uh, you'll just be guaranteed yellowfin tuna. So we're about to have a crack at that. Uh, we all slept in a bit, the sun's come up, but uh, I think they'll still be there. Hopefully he's not lying. It doesn't sound like him. Hey, you sleeping in, Chris? <laughs> no one there to grab my big toe. He always needs to be dragged out of bed, this one. We're punching into it until we got the right no, angle. Let's go too, Reese. Yeah. And now we're going to turn so we can sail. We were going three knots. Let's see what we can get up to. Gaff, please, guys. Where's the gaff? Eat it all 
The sun went down on day nine and we found an anchorage to pull into for the night. Oh, just a bit of mackerel row. You know, Taz likes these exotic foods. Um, like sausages. It doesn't really have an aroma. And I was like, I thought, oh, is it fishy? Oh, yummy. It's actually smelled good. Okay, it's so good. we had this for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Taj is trying some fish row. Taj and Lee, Dad cooked it up. Tonight, I, I yeah, can't do it. Mate, I cooked it for you. It is not a normal sausage. Look. Hey, you an eyeball. That's a sausage. It's quite good, actually. Is it alright? Not bad. If there was no fish taste in it, that'd be delicious. Why don't you put it with some mayo? No, no, I'm putting some salt with it. You and it. Is it worse than eyeballs? What's the thought going on? I'm trying to remember what that taste is. Would I like it? I'm still trying to figure out what it tastes like. To be honest, my brain doesn't come. Like that's what I thought. It does. Honestly, couldn't be f so far from a chicken sausage. It's ridiculous. I reckon. What the taste? Yeah. Whoever wants some can so have some. You Just don't do any spewing or oh, anything. Oh, that 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 oh. What did you do to that one? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll cut it for you, mate. Yeah. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> I start the gag. It's fine, isn't it? So could you explain what you're feeling, thinking, tasting? Alright, it's just the texture. It's like very oh, grainy. Grainy. Yeah. They just need to be a bit bigger. And I don't know what it tastes like. Okay. Uh, I actually it, would eat more. I gotta stay true to my word. There we go. It's not bad, is it? It's Mate, this one's for you. Is this the texture? Ain't no right? row, but it's a uh, mackerel. I like the texture. I just don't like that little, that real it's fishy real, flare it's at real the end. Fishy. Yeah. Well, I actually didn't. I just put salt on it. Yeah. Tastes oh. like a, um, <laughs> you know, when you go into seafood shop and that smell. That's what it tastes like. That's right. a pleasant way. So and it tastes a little bit prawny. If you had a bit of tartare sauce or something, it'd probably be. I'd probably eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys finished yet? Yeah. <laughs> she knows, she goes. Now, Lucai, this is uh, Border Force, can we go to 7272? 7 7 over. Uh, good morning, thanks for getting back to us. A uh, couple of routine questions. Can I get the vessel's quarter registration, your last quarter call, and next quarter call, over. Uh, in Indonesia, and we're heading towards Cairns, over. Uh, Roger that. I get the number of people on board, over. Uh, there's eight. Santa! Santa's here to help! Did you call Santa? Santa's here. <laughs> had to pull the sails in here. We've just got 40 knots on the nose. East coast of Australia. of Australia, squall after squall, going into the wind. We did sail a little bit earlier today, but we're going into the wind and uh, got 15, 15, 20 knots. Not too bad, but they pulled the main down. We're all tucked away, sails are tucked away, motoring into it. Going a big three and a half knots. <laughs> It's a powerful one, I know that much. I reckon it's got a shark. I hope it's a fish. I'm going tuna. It's either a tuna or a shark. Watch your head. Is it a shark? You just can't fish in these waters, they're full of sharks. Look at this one. You got the rod, mate? Someone yeah. got the rod? I've got it. There you go. Oh no. That's how you do it.
So yesterday we were beating into the wind quite badly. We were going pretty slow, it wasn't really comfortable. But we stopped at Morris Island last night and we're just pulled anchor just now. And we're heading for Stanley Island. Um, Stanley Island to the next stretch is going to be the worst for us. So we will maybe sit it out, wait for a little weather window there. Um, but we've got 50, 50 to 60 nautical miles today to get to Stanley Island. Hopefully we've got either wind behind us or you know, light winds. Either way, that'd be great. Also yesterday there was a storm and there was a massive crack of thunder and lightning. So we think the wind instrument got hit by lightning or the boat got struck by lightning and the wind instrument isn't working. So that's not helpful, but he, we've got a captain that just knows what he's doing. <laughs> It's about eight knots of wind, though. <laughs> Speed works, but it's just the, uh, the little handle doobie whacker. Going 3.8 knots. Come on, tap it a little bit faster. Baby shark. Okay, guys, if you like that episode, please remember to like, subscribe, become a patron, see our videos ad free, and before anyone else. We love you again. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys. It's a bloody ripper of a sunset. Got anything to say, Sarah? Yeah. How are you feeling? Wow, wow, just ignore me. Mm. Just the, um, <laughs> <laughs> camera ready! You have to be camera ready as soon as you wake up. Who's those little muscles You fade my hair, oh, please. Oh, hi there. Hi there. Done. That's how you do it, people.